This is AP Chemistry for Hoover High School and this is Lesson 10 on Molar Mass. So we're going to start talking about mass, that, how to compute the molar mass of a atom or a molecule or a compound. And that's going to be critical because we're going to be using this throughout the entire course. So let's go ahead and get started on this. So first you have to understand the concept of a mole. A mole is that number. I'm not even going to say it. Um, of anything. So a mole is just a number like a dozen means 12. Uh, the word mole means that number. It could be of anything. You could have a mole of pizzas or a mole of cars or a mole of anything that you want. Again, just like a dozen, it just signifies a certain number. And that number is called Avogadro's number. Though throughout the course, we'll never call it Avogadro's number. We're going to call it a mole. In scientific notation, a mole is written 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power. So now you see why we learned scientific notation. You don't want to be working with a number that long, <clears throat> and you're going to have to work with it every single day in this class. So remember that you can think of an atomic mass unit as the mass of a single proton or a single neutron. We're not going to get into the hair splitting difference that the neutron's a little heavier. It's just one and one. Each of them is one atomic mass unit. So here's the problem. We can't measure the mass of a proton, neutron, atom, or molecule on a, on that, on a scale that's that small. So what do we do? How do we deal with it in terms of measuring the weight or mass of something? So an oxygen atom has a mass of 16 AMU but we can't measure 16 AMU on any kind of a, a scale or balance that we would have in the, in the lab. Nobody does. So we measure the mass, we, we measure mass in grams, and we have scales for that. All the scales we have are calibrated in units of grams. Again, a gram is about the mass, you think of one of the larger size paper clips, not real big clasp clips, but the, the larger size paper clip, uh, that's about one gram. It's not very heavy but it's enough for us to, to mass or to weigh. So we know that oxygen from the periodic table has a mass of 16 AMU. Just check your periodic table. It's the number on the bottom. That's the atomic mass. So we can't measure 16 AMU. It's just not big enough for a scale. So what if we knew how many oxygen atoms it would take to have a mass of 16 grams? then by knowing the number of grams of oxygen we had, we would know how many oxygen atoms we have. In chemistry, we're actually interested in numbers of atoms and molecules because a chemical reaction is going to match up a certain number of atoms of one substance and another substance to give us some kind of a product, some kind of a compound out of that. And so um, we need a way to know how many atoms and molecules we have by mass. So how do we do this? What is the number? And you'll notice the significance of those numbers. That the number in front of AMU is exactly the same number in front of grams. There's a very specific number of atoms that will take you from 16 AMU, from the mass of a single oxygen atom, to 16 grams, which is a big basket full of oxygen atoms, a big bundle. So the answer is Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is the number of atoms that will convert the mass of a single oxygen atom to the same number of grams. So that specific number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, will convert 16 AMU to 16 grams. What if scientists tomorrow decided they wanted to measure things in pounds? Instead of using grams for mass, they use pounds, which is really a measure of weight, but we can treat them the same. What if they want to do 16 pounds? There would still be a single number that would do that, but it would be different than 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. But the magic number to convert from the mass of a single proton to the mass of that uh, of the same number, excuse me, a single oxygen atom to the mass of a whole ba basket of oxygen atoms of the same number, 16 and 16, is going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So that's a magic number in chemistry. So that's called the atomic mass when it's in AMU. 
and that's called the molar mass. So that's a term you want to get used to. It's the mass of a mole of some substance. So just let's just look at a comparison for about four or five different um, substances here. So if you take carbon, look at your periodic table. It has a mass of 12.01, an atomic mass of 12.01 AMU. If you multiply that by a mole, that number, you get 12.01 grams. So the number is the matches. It, it's the same. What, what does that mean, though? It means if you had 12.01 grams, you would know that you have exactly 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. If you had 24.02 grams, twice that much, you'd know that you had two times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So by knowing the substance and knowing the mass, you can tell how many atoms you have. And that's, uh, I mean, that's what makes chemistry, that's what allows us to do chemistry. Without that knowledge, we would not be able to do chemistry. Nitrogen, look at your periodic tables, 14.01 atomic mass units. If you multiply that by that number of atoms, you'll get 14.01 grams. Neon. 20.18 AMU, yet multiply it by a mole, and you get a molar mass of 20.18 grams. Numbers the same, unit of measure changes from AMU to grams. Aluminum, 26.98 AMU, multiply it by a mole, 26.98 grams. One more, sulfur, 32.07 AMU, multiply it by a mole, 32.07 grams. So that's the magic of that number. So here's some common examples of chemical molecules and compounds. And so we want to distinguish between the two. So H2, that's two hydrogen atoms bonded to form one hydrogen molecule. So the small subscript 2 means it's two atoms of hydrogen. They bond together and form a single molecule of hydrogen. Hydrogen never appears in nature as an atom. It's always bonded with another hydrogen to form an H2 molecule, a hydrogen molecule, which is H subscript 2. That's a molecule. Why is it a molecule? It is a covalent bond. It is a non-metal bonding with another non-metal. Hydrogen's a non-metal. So that is a molecule. It's an independent structure. You can have hydrogen uh, molecules floating around in the atmosphere independently of one another. H2O. That's one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms bonded. Those are also non-metals. Look at your periodic table. Oxygen's way over on the right. Hydrogen is just the exception. It's way on the left on the top of the first column. However, it is a non-metal. Um, and so if you have non-metal, non-metal, that forms a covalent bond and that forms an independent structure called a molecule. That's why you can boil water and the water molecules can float off into the atmosphere independent of one another. CO2, that's what you exhale when you breathe. It's one carbon and two oxygen atoms. They're bonded together in, in a covalent bond. Again, carbon and oxygen are both non-metals, so they form covalent bonds. Remember, that's two strong guys having a tug of war. Neither one can win the tug of war, so they decide to share electrons and bond together by sharing their electrons to fulfill the octet rule, to create octets for each other. And that forms a molecule, an independent structure. NaCl, that's one sodium and one chlorine atom. Now, this is not a molecule. It's an ionic bond. Na, remember, is an alkali metal way over on the left. Chlorine is a halogen way over on the right. Chlorine takes an electron away from, from sodium. That makes sodium positively charged. A cation makes chlorine negatively charged. An anion, the positive and negative attract each other. However, you don't see NaCl molecules floating around independently. Remember, they're like they're, they form crystal lattice structures. When you see a single grain of salt coming out of your salt shaker and look at a single grain, it looks like a cube. Um, that is a crystal lattice structure of Na's and Cl. So they're like bricks in a wall. Na, Cl, Na, Cl, Na, Cl. They just alternate back and forth and they do that in three dimensions. But the smallest unit of that salt is one sodium for one chlorine. That's the ratio, one to one. So that's not a molecule separate independent structure. It's like two bricks in a wall. So that's called a formula unit. Okay, O2 is two oxygen atoms bonded to form an oxygen molecule. Again, oxygen is a non-metal, so you have two non-metals there, and that forms a molecule. The small number after the atoms is called a subscript. A subscript of one is not written. 
So for example, H2O, you don't write the one after the O in H2O, or you don't write it after the C in CO2. It's not written, but it, it's implied that it's one. Also, H2 and O2 are covalent bonds that form molecules. They are not compounds because they only have one element. So a compound has to be two or more elements. So let's go down these. H2 is a molecule, but not a compound because it only has one element. H2O is both a molecule and a compound because it has, um, it's covalently bonded to form a molecule and it has more than one element. CO2 is a compound and a molecule, covalently bonded, two different elements. NaCl is a compound but not a molecule. It's a formula unit, it forms an ionic bond. And O2 is a molecule but not a compound. If a number appears in front of a chemical formula, it means that there is more than one molecule or formula unit uh, of that formula. So 2H2O means that you have two H2O molecules. So if you're counting atoms, there are four, in two H2O molecules, two water molecules, there are four atoms of hydrogen and there's two oxygen atoms total. Three CO2 means that you have three CO2 molecules which means that you have three carbon atoms and six oxygen atoms. So you'll notice how you multiply the three times the two that's on oxygen to tell you how many atoms of oxygen total that you have in three molecules of carbon dioxide. It's kind of like in math when you distribute a number in, inside of parentheses, you multiply everything in the parentheses by that number on the outside. That's kind of what you're doing here. Okay, 4O2 means you have four oxygen molecules. So there are a total of eight oxygen atoms in the four molecules. Okay, so the large number in front is called the coefficient, and it indicates how many of, of the complete units of each of those that you have. So now we're going to talk about converting atomic mass to molar mass. It's a very simple process we've talked about. We talked about it in Avogadro's number and the mole. So atomic mass of a single water molecule is this. You get it straight off the periodic table. So for H2O, you take two hydrogens. Each hydrogen is 1.01 AMU and, and oxygen is 16.0. Again, that's the atomic mass that you'll find on your periodic table. And you add them up. And so the mass of a water molecule is 18.02 AMU. But again, in our world, we don't deal with AMU. It's too small a unit for us to measure. So the molar mass of one mole of water molecules, that's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, is exactly the same. Everything looks exactly the same. You use the atomic mass from the periodic table, except instead of calling it AMU, you call it grams. So as long as we know we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of whatever the substance is, in this case water, we know we can convert those same numbers from above into grams, into the same number of grams, and that's the significance of, of Avogadro's number. And here's just another example. So you have two methane molecules. Methane is CH4, also known as natural gas. So that means you're going to have two carbons, and you're going to have a total of eight hydrogen. Okay, two times four is eight. So you just have to add up each of those individual masses of each of those atoms. And for two methane molecules, uh, it is a molecule, it's covalently bonded because carbon and hydrogen are non-metals. Uh, you will end up with that number on the bottom. So these numbers are the atomic mass numbers from your periodic table. We now think of them though as molar mass. We're going to be talking in grams, not in AMUs. Okay, so let's do a few calculations and I'm going to have you draw a few tables like this until you get comfortable with this process of these conversions. I'm going to have you draw tables like this, a few of them. Um, so we're going to start with water and water has a hydrogen, it has oxygen, and it forms H2O. So how many of each of those atoms do we need? Well, we need two hydrogen, one oxygen, and together that forms one H2O. Don't add the atoms or molecules. Don't say two plus one is three. Think of it like this. To make a bicycle, it takes two wheels and one seat to make one bicycle, not three bicycles. So it's 
two parts of one, one part of the other gives you one whole, which is the water molecule. The atomic mass you get straight off the periodic table. It's 2.02 2 times 1.01 is, is going to be 2.02 .02 for hydrogen in AMU. And 1 times 16 for the oxygen is 16 AMU. Now you do add the masses together to get the mass of the water molecule and it's going to be 18.02 AMU. Now to convert to moles, it, all the numbers are the same. The only thing that changes is the unit of measure for mass it becomes grams. So really this is all we're interested in over on this side. We'll get to where we don't even do the atoms, molecules, atomic mass. We just go straight to moles and molar mass because that's what we're going to be working with. Again, all it is is multiplying all the atoms and molecules by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd to make a big basket of them so we can have large enough amount to work with. Okay, so we have two moles if we multiply by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. We have two moles of hydrogen, one mole of oxygen, and one mole that produces one mole of water. That means we're going to have 2.02 .02 grams of hydrogen, 16 grams of oxygen for a total of 18.02 .02 grams of water. Now the reason the one on the bottom is um, is in a special little box is because it means what you're talking about is that one mole of water is going to require all of those other numbers. So if I want two moles of water, I'm going to have to double any of those other numbers I see up there. If I want three moles, I'm going to have to multiply by three any of those numbers up there. Okay, so it's it's so basically everything there is referenced around one mole of water. What does it take to make one mole of water? So let's do a few little problems here. And you can always stop the video and see if you can work them on your own. Okay, it's not a formal assignment, but the more practice you get, the better. So how many grams is three moles of water of H2O. Well, we see that one mole of water in that big red box is 18.02 grams. So if we want three moles of water, we're going to multiply that by three. So there are three times 18.02 grams of, of H2O, uh, which equals 54.06 grams of H2O in three moles of water. So three moles of water would weigh 54.06 grams. How about this one? How many moles of hydrogen are needed to make four moles of H2O? So go over into the big red box and you see that one mole of H2O requires two moles of hydrogen. Go to the moles column there and go to the hydrogen row and just go to where they cross and that there's a two there, two moles. So if I want four moles of H2O, I'm going to have to multiply two times four and that equals eight moles of hydrogen. I need twice as much hydrogen, twice as many moles of hydrogen as I have moles of, of water. That will be required to make four moles of H2O. We'll take eight moles of hydrogen. Okay, how many moles of O are needed to make three moles of H2O? Think about that. So one mole of H2O requires one mole of water. Therefore, three moles of H2O is gonna require three moles of water. There are three times one equals three moles of oxygen are needed to make uh, three moles of H2O. Let's do another. How many grams of oxygen are needed to make three moles of H2O? So you see one mole of H2O is going to require 16 grams of oxygen. Go to the oxygen row and go over to the molar mass column and it's 16 grams. So if you want three moles of H2O, you're going to need three times 16 grams, which equals 48 grams of oxygen to make three moles of H2O. It's just like baking cakes. You know, if you want to cake, bake a cake, you need two cups of sugar and a pound of flour and, and four eggs. And, and if you want to have three cakes, then you have to multiply all those ingredients by three. It's, this is cooking class, okay? It's, it's advanced cooking class. You tell that to Chef Dolan or Chef Lou. Um, okay, here we go. How many grams of hydrogen are needed to make seven moles of H2O. So to make one mole of H2O, go up to the hydrogen row and molar mass. To make one mole is 2.02 .02 grams of hydrogen. So if you want seven moles, you're gonna have to multiply that number by seven. So there's seven times 2.02 .02 grams of hydrogen, which equals 14.14 grams of hydrogen needed to make seven moles of H2O. All right, so that takes care of this lesson on molar mass, how to figure out molar mass. You're going to be working with this every day, so practice these problems, do the assignment, do the assignments in a timely manner, please, and uh, we're going to kind of tighten up the deadlines a bit because it's important that you keep up. If I let you let a 
assignment slide, it's not good for you. So we will uh, move on with this subject uh, tomorrow and I'll see you on the next lesson.